Hello all, welcome back to this session on static timing analysis. So this is a continuation of the previous sessions where we have calculated setup time and hold time with positive skew, with positive clock skew in our previous sessions. So in this session, we will start with the calculation of setup time and hold time by considering the negative clock skew. Okay, so about the clock skew, positive clock skew and negative clock skew, we have already discussed in our previous session. So if you are having any doubts or queries, please refer to the previous videos or you can comment in the comment section or you can also ping me in the telegram. Okay, so in this session, we will start with the uh, calculation of setup time and hold time with negative clock skew. Okay, so first we will start with the calculation of setup time by considering negative clock skew. Okay, by considering negative clock skew. So we'll take the same circuit which is taken for the calculation of uh, setup time and hold time without positive skew and uh, with positive skew. So we'll take the same circuit. So this is D flip-flops, Q, Q bar, D, Q, Q bar. And the clock pins are present for this. So the clock uh, is given from this side. So we have discussed in our negative skew, right? So the clock and data direction are different. So the clock is directly given to this second flip-flop and it is given through a combinational circuit to the first flip-flop, right? And the data, uh, this is first given to the D flip-flop and through a combinational circuit, it will reach the second flip-flop. This is a combinational circuit, combinational circuit. So same. So that uh, here the data is flowing from first flip-flop to second flip-flop and the clock is flowing from, the clock is going from second flip-flop to first flip-flop, right? So here it is negative skew. So I will represent this in the form of uh, waveform. So for the first flip-flop, let's say the clock is this. This is the clock given to the first flip-flop. The two flip-flops are working on the positive edges of the clock. And the second flip-flop clock reaches before the first flip-flop clock, right? So this is the waveform for the second flip-flop. So in the diagram, we can see right the clock is uh, reaching first to the second flip-flop, then it is reaching to the first flip-flop. So the diagrammatical representation of this is this. So flip-flop two gets the clock first, then the flip-flop one gets the clock, right? Next. Now, so this time interval is the skew we are getting, right? So this time interval is the skew. This is negative skew. We will represent it by delta symbol. Okay, yeah. Next here also, if we want, we can write. Uh, we can do this. So this is the skew. And let's say the setup time uh, is a second a setup time of second flip flop is somewhere here, right? So this is the setup time for the first flip flop also. It will be somewhere here. Okay. So, uh, when the data should reach the second flip flop from the first flip flop, that is the arrival time, right? So, that is same for uh, this case also. In previous sessions, we have seen the arrival time, right? So, there is no change in the circuit. Okay. So, the arrival time will be same, which is nothing but T clock to Q plus T combination. This is the arrival time. That is the data which is reaching the time the data is taking to reach the second flip-flop from first flip-flop. That is the arrival time. Okay. Now, what is the required time? Required time in this case changes. Let's calculate the required time. What is the required time here? So let's say the time period of the clock is T clock. Okay. So this is the time period of the clock. T clock. The time period of the two clocks is same. Okay. Next. 
So let's say this is the time period of the T clock. So where we want the data, this point, we should get the data. So how we should calculate T clock minus, if we subtract this Q, then we will get this point rate T clock minus setup time minus Q, we will get this setup uh, time interval, right? So required time is calculated by T clock time period minus setup time minus sorry minus uh, setup time t setup minus this interval time interval skew okay minus t skew or also we can represent this as delta okay so this is the required time now to avoid to avoid setup time violation what is the condition we have the arrival time should be less than the required time that is the data should arrive before the required time itself right to avoid the setup time variation this also we have discussed in our previous session okay so once uh, refer that if you are having any confusion or if you haven't watched it okay next so the uh, to avoid setup time violation what we should do arrival time should be uh, less than required time so what is arrival time t clock to q plus t combinational should be less than or equal to t clock minus t setup minus delta so this is the requirement we should have so if we simplify this further we will get t clock to q plus t combinational plus t setup plus delta which should be less than or equal to time period of the clock. The clock. So this is the setup time equation, setup time equation with negative clock skew, with negative clock skew. Now let's take an example, example of all these values. Let's consider there is no negative skew at all, okay? So let's say t clock to q is somewhere around one nanosecond and t combinational is around let's say one nanosecond and t setup of the flip-flops is around two nanoseconds okay now in this case we are not considering any skew uh, let's say the time period of the clock is uh, five nanoseconds okay so what happens here uh, if we substitute all these values in this equation then we will get t clock to q 1 nanosecond plus t combinational 1 nanosecond plus setup time 2 nanoseconds should less should be less than or equal to 5 nanoseconds that is we are not considering a skew okay for now we are not considering any skew then what we will get 1 nanosecond 2 nanoseconds 4 nanoseconds which is less than or equal to 5 nanoseconds this is true right so there is no setup time violation okay so if we design the circuit with, with this uh, delays, then there will be no setup time violations. Now we will consider the skew, okay, we will consider the skew. What will happen? 1 nanosecond plus 1 nanosecond plus 2 nanoseconds plus what is the skew? Let's say 1 nanosecond. Skew is nothing but 1 nanoseconds, let's say. Then what happened? Plus 1 nanosecond. Let's say the skew is 2 nanoseconds should be less than or equal to 5 nanoseconds. 4 nanoseconds plus 2 nanoseconds should less than or equal to 5 nanoseconds. So 6 nanoseconds is not less than equal to 5 nanoseconds, right? So there will be a setup time violation. So in this case, we can conclude that with, with introduction of negative skew, there will be, there are the possibilities of setup time violations okay whereas in case of positive skew we have concluded that there may be no chances of or there will be removal of setup time violations right we have seen the example also but in the case of negative skew there may be a chances of setup time violations now let's derive the same thing for whole time whole time by considering negative skew right by considering negative skew so let's see 
what is this whole time by considering negative square we will take the same circuit which we have taken for setup time so let's see the waveform for this this is the clock given for the first flip flop next second flip flop will get the clock before the first flip flop right so this is the clock which is given to the second flip flop right next let's say this is our skew and let's say this is our hold time or t hold okay so somewhere okay so this is our skew and this is our hold wait a minute and let's say this is our hold time let's say this is our hold time right so this is our t hold now so what is the arrival time of the data which is same that is t clock to q plus t combinational is our arrival time and what is the required time when we should get the data that is t hole minus delta so this whole time minus this skew so after this point so after this whole time period we can get the data that is our requirement so how to get this time interval this is given by t hole minus delta okay. so t hole minus delta so yeah next so to avoid so to avoid whole time violation what is the requirement the arrival time should be greater than the required time that is nothing but t clock to q plus t combinational should be greater than or equal to t whole plus delta okay so what we'll get now sorry t whole minus delta so what we'll get now t clock to q plus t combinational plus delta should be greater than or equal to t so this is the equation for whole time right So this is the equation for whole time. So what is the equation? T clock to Q plus T combination plus delta should be less than, should be greater than or equal to T. Okay. So now let's again consider some examples for, uh, values for this. So let's say T clock to Q is 1 nanosecond and T combinational is 1 nanosecond and Let's say in this case we have we don't have any delta and t hold is one nanosecond or let's say it is uh, uh, two nanoseconds. Okay, so what happens here? So one nanosecond plus one nanosecond should be greater than or equal to two nanoseconds. So there is no hold time violation, right? And if we add the skew, then what happens? Then 1 nanosecond plus 1 nanosecond plus skew, let's say it is 1 nanosecond, should be greater than or equal to 2 nanoseconds. It is 3 nanoseconds is greater than or equal to 2 nanoseconds. So, in this case, can we say the skew, the negative skew is helping us to remove the whole time violation? Yes. In this case, the negative skew is helping us to avoid whole time violation. So, this is about whole time violation, whole time check and setup time check. So that's all for this session.